Hi, I'm Stephen Stomsky with Stomsky Racing. In this video we're going to talk about our SR130 spark plug repair kit. It's for repairing threads on the heads on 911s. The kit comes complete with the jig, guides, drivers, and thumb screws that allow you to anchor the fixture in place and to use time, either time certs, regular 4412E deep plug spark plug repair kit, or and, and an alternative, we also have fixtures to use time certs BS kit, which contrary to popular belief, when you see the, the price tag, the BS does not stand for what you think it stands for. It actually stands for a big cert, which is for repairing a, a job that's either gone really south or uh, bigger, bigger than problem than you originally encountered with a standard time cert. Kit allows, our kits allow you to repair, uh, effectuate a proper repair when the engine's still in the car, and it also allows you to repair the heads on, the, if it's engines on the stand, and just helps you guide and keeps everything properly aligned so that you're not worried about taking a, a bad head and, and making it worse because you can't access the, can't access the holes. By digitizing our, our, a head and a cam carrier, and by CNC machining our jigs, we've been able to very accurately repeat the angles and the position of the tools as they interface with the head so that the exact position of the spark plug hole is mated up with the tools each and every time. And this doesn't matter whether the engine's in the car or whether it's on an engine stand or on the bench. It allows you to predictably and confidently time cert ahead or if you're if you're lucky enough just to chase the threads and to clean them up and you can use time search tools to do either either of those in conjunction with our jigs our jig will register off of two of the studs off of the off the cam carrier uh, two of the valve cover studs and we'll position that tool right where you need it in order to in order to use time search tools today we're going to be demonstrating our standard SR-130 standard time cert repair jig, but the, the process is very, it's very similar for time cert's BS kit as well, um, although the tooling in the BS kit is longer and it's going to require you to be uh, a, a little bit more creative and inventive when you're using the jig as it goes into the, uh, in, into the into the heads as the engine is in the car because the tools are longer and the chassis is going to have uh, chassis rails are going to be uh, be somewhat a factor in that case so the way that you put the tools in, in into the head there is going to be uh, needs to be a little bit more creative than what we're showing today but the concepts are the same the process is similar and you'll have a, a better idea of, uh, of that as we go through this through this today but today we're going to demonstrate the SR-130 on, on our demo engine, which conveniently for us is outside the car and uh, it also makes for better video quality and a little bit better uh, illustration of how to use the tool. You can use the tool as, as you see fit. It's a, this is basically just a guide and a suggestion of how to incorporate our fixture in with the time cert kits. Um, you, your circumstance might be a little bit different and keep that in mind as, as we go through this. This is just a suggestion. It's a basic, basic parameters of how we've designed the tool, but your circumstance might be a little bit different and uh, you might be able to come up with a better, uh, better solution using our, our fixtures and, and the time cert kits to accomplish either a, a complete repair or just a chasing of the threads, uh, whichever the case might be for you. So well, first, first thing we're going to do is uh, once again sacrifice our our engine here, our, which is a 3.2. Uh, but this fixture does work on uh, all the 911 engines. Um, we're going to index off of a couple of the studs coming out of the cam tower, the uh, valve cover studs, and that is where we'll meet up next. Now the first thing we do is is put our fixture in place. In this case, we're working over cylinder number two. Uh, sometimes the studs as they come out of the cam carrier get a little bent or a little twisted out of shape. Try to make sure that they're true and somewhat accurate and that's going to help fix 
the jig in place. Uh, because of tolerances, there is a little bit of play on the fixture, and I'll show you how to adjust for that right now. First thing we do is since is put on the thumb screws over the over the fixture, and from here leave it just leave it just a little bit loose. The first thing I do is use TimeSert's insert driver, which is actually a, th a thread forming tap in conjunction with our SR130 guide tube and insert that into the fixture and then into the head. As the insert driver goes into the spark plug hole, see if you can catch the threads. And if you're, if you're lucky enough and if the threads aren't really trashed, you'll be able to, to index the insert driver into the spark plug hole and then once it's in, in place, then you can go ahead and cinch down the thumb screws and everything's going to be, be registered and predictable. From here, you can go ahead and chase the threads and you'll get a feel for how bad, how bad things are and get a feel for how everything is seated. Um, usually if you're at this point, you're going to be putting a time cert in anyway, so you might as well just back out your, just back out, back out your tools and then we can go ahead and, and go to the next step. One thing that is critical to remember during this process is to remember and is to make sure that for the head that you are working on, that the piston is not at top dead center. And moreover, you need to make sure that both the valves are closed. Now you'll need to confirm this for your specific application, but in my case, for this engine, I've determined that at approximately 90 degrees after top dead center, both valves are closed and the piston is far enough away from the head that gives us plenty for the tools to enter partially into the combustion chamber and for us to get the time cert seated. Um, also, when you are using the thread forming tap, uh, I suggest a little bit of light oil like a WD-40 just to, just to help things along a little bit. When you come in with the step tap, which is our next step from here, um, I suggest packing the flutes of the tap with grease and that will catch all the, or the vast majority of any chips that are created as you go ahead and um, open, up the, open up the spark plug hole. That's going to be good practice. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can, other ways that you can get rid of the, the chips, uh, vacuum cleaner, blowing out air or whatever, but just be aware that uh, the, probably the best way is to pack the flutes with grease. Now since this is a, tap, a, a step tap, uh, the, the first few threads on the tap are, are cut to start off at a, a, for the 14 millimeter plug hole. And we'll go ahead and get that started now. And just like any any thread like this, I, I suggest uh, getting it started by getting a feel by going counterclockwise. And once you feel that it's seated, then you can go ahead and go ahead and start the, the threading. Um, the, the first few threads will go in nicely, and then you're going to feel the the larger step start to start to take place. And this is where you need your your ratchet. Cut the threads and you can monitor the depth of the cut of the threads and of the tap by watching our driver as it goes into the sleeve. Once you're past a certain point the driver will no longer engage the step tap and at that point there your you will be at the limit of the tap and where you need to be for the next step which is to cut the seat and there were and we're there now now at this point here we'll remove the SR130 guide sleeve 
but leave in place time search step tap because that's going to be used to center and to guide time search seat cutter which is actually going to do two things one it's going to provide relief for the insert and two it's going to cut a relief for the the spark plug seat as well slide in the seat cutter and use tap the use time search wrench that's included in the kit. Now what I've done is on the wrench is I've put a mark right where the wrench intersects with our SR130 fixture. And then just above that, about two millimeters, I've put another mark that that will show me when the tool is properly seated and when it is this the seat has been completely cut. I have now have a reference point external to the tool. And at this point here, it's just a matter of spinning the seat cutter until you get to the point of having a full and complete relief for both the insert and the spark plugs as well. And once you're there, you'll be able to reference that on the tape marks that you have on the wrench. It's just, just about there. At this point here, you might want to use a little bit of air to blow the chips clean that are down in around the spark plug seat and clean up that before you start to take out take out the tools but that's the next step is to take out both the seat cutter the end tap so at this point we pull out the seat cutter and using the tap driver We then pull out time cert tap. So at this point here, you want to make sure that the new newly cut seat and taps are clean and ready to accept the insert. If you have a bore scope or if the engine's out of the car like this, just take a flashlight, get a look down in there. You want to make sure that the seat's evenly cut. Now it's time to put in the insert and first of all put a couple of uh, drops of time cert insert driver oil onto the driver which is actually the thread forming tap and spin on the spin on your new insert. I still like to use the guide tube, the SR130 guide tube and help index everything properly. Let slide down and once again just like we were before go ahead and turn it backwards a little bit counterclockwise to see that you're you've got a good seat and then once you start to to thread it in to thread the insert into the head you'll feel you'll feel like it taking thing taking hold i'm using the extension here you really don't need one you might not be able to use it when it's in the car but the first few turns are going to go in nice and smoothly and nice and easily until you start to get in deeper into the head. And once you start to get deeper into the head with the insert, it starts to tighten up a little bit because some, a couple of the threads on the insert are deformed. And those are what seat the insert into the head. And I, at this point here, just to make sure I've got full range, I take out the, the guide sleeve and continue to drive the new insert into place as it continues to tighten up. Once you start to feel it loosen up, you know that you're past, and then you can start to remove the tool and the 
insert will stay in place. The insert driver will come out and you'll be good to go. Once again, if you have the opportunity with a borescope or the flashlight to take a look to see how it's seated, you'll confirm that everything is as it needs to be. You have a general idea now how our tools work on the engine and work with the time cert tools as it is out of the car. Um, each particular case, whether uh, the car, the engine's in the car, or which particular cylinder you're working on is going to kind of dictate to you how the tool is used. In some cases, if you have a lot of accessories on the engine, air conditioning and turbos or whatever else might be on there, it's going to determine how, how the tool is installed and how easy the process may or may not be. If, uh, for example, you're working on uh, infamous number six uh, back in the back right-hand corner and passenger side corner, uh, there's, and especially if you're using the big cert setup, you're, as you present the tool, to number six, you're, you might have to do things a little bit differently uh, since it is fairly constrained back there. My one suggestion is to actually, instead of mounting the fixture on the head to start with uh, and then presenting the tools to the fixture, I suggest, at least for number six, is to insert the guide sleeve with the tool partially inserted as as it is here and then present it to, to number six and do these things together in one one process that way there since everything's constrained back there you you'll be able to have a, a little bit more clearance to get the the tool in place nine out of ten machinist surveys agree that one of the more difficult processes is to tap a true and accurate hole uh, ask those same machinists what the process is like when you don't have easy access to the hole and they'll, they'll roll their eyes and uh, they'll, they'll agree that it's a very difficult process to get a true and accurate thread cut or tapped into, a, in, into any circumstance. Hopefully the need won't arise, but if it does, we have the tools that will allow you to make a repair of an otherwise trashed head. We stock both the big cert kits and the regular time cert kits if you happen not to have those. And of course we have our jig, jig kits, the SR-130s available for you to, to use those tools to make a very accurate and dependable repair. Appreciate you tuning in. Look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.